Welcome. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph y equals cosecant of 2x minus pi halves minus 2. Um, so to graph the cosecant function, we want to graph the sine function, which is the reciprocal function of that, uh, first. So to do that, I'll write y equals sine of 2x minus pi halves minus 2. Um, so I'm going to graph the sine function. And to graph the sine function, it's helpful to understand you know, what are all the transformations and how is this graph going to be affected. So pretty much what I want to do is figure out what the amplitude is. What is the period? What is the x scale? What is the vertical transformation? And what is the phase shift? Um, so to do that, we need to kind of understand how is, this, how is all these numbers and variables and blah, blah, blah affecting our graph. So we want to know this kind of transformation equation, which is y equals a times sine of bx minus c plus d where a, b, and c, and d are all going to have some way that are going to be affecting the graph. Um, so to determine our amplitude, amplitude is simply just the absolute value of a. The period is 2 pi divided by b. x scale is just your period divided by 4. Vertical translation is just your value d. And phase shift is what's in the parentheses set equal to 0. Okay. So let's go ahead and figure out each one of these, and then let's set the, what the graph is for sine, and then we can go and graph cosine. So for amplitude, OK. So for amplitude, we have the absolute value of, you can see there's no number that's in front of the sine, so that's going to be absolute value of 1, which is just equal to 1. Period is 2 pi divided by b, which you can see our b in this case is 2. So that's 2 pi divided by 2, which is just equal to pi. My x scale is just pi divided by 4. Vertical translation, you can see d is equal to negative 2. So since d is equal to negative 2, that means I'm going to shift my graph down two units. Um, and my phase shift is going to be 2x minus pi halves equal to 0. Now, solving for x, I'll add pi halves. And I get 2x equals pi halves divided by 2, divided by 2. x equals pi over 4. OK, so what exactly does the phase shift do? Now, because remember, these graphs go on and on and on forever, right? Well, the reason why we have the phase shift is that's a very helpful standard of if you look at where the initial graph is, usually we say you know, sine and cosine, uh, the initial period, they start at 0. So the phase shift is kind of where, from that initial period, where are they shifting, even though they do continue um, forever in both directions. Now. What I like to do when I'm graphing is I always like to start my graph, just like how we start the initial period at 0. When we have a phase shift, I like to start at that value. Um, OK. So let's start at pi halves. OK, so let's pretend here's 0, right? Now we know the amplitude's up 1, down 1. So I'm going to say up 1, down 1. All right. Um, and then we have a phase shift, or we have a scale of pi over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now remember, there's four important points that create the period, right? So if this is pi over 4, add pi over 4 again, that's pi halves. Add pi over, again, pi over 4 again, that's 3 pi over 4. And then add pi again, that would be pi. And you can see that 4x scales make up my period. All right. However, remember, we're not starting at 0. We're starting here. So therefore, I need to add one more x scale over there. So that would be pi over 4. Uh, oh, sorry. That's 3 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4, this would be 5 pi over 4. OK? So the distance from here to here is creating one period. Now, I'm going to want to create at least two periods. Um, so I'm going to continue my scale just adding pi over 4 each one. So that would be 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. 8 pi over 4, and 9 pi over 4. Now, obviously, we can reduce this down to 2 pi. And we can reduce this down to 3 halves. OK? So now we have at least two periods set up. OK, now when we look at the parent graph of sine, we know it starts at kind of the axis and then goes up to it, or at, starts at an intercept and then goes up to its maximum. However, please note, though, that we have a vertical translation of down two units. So instead, yes, it would start here, but it has to be shifted down two units. So instead of crossing here and going up to here and going down to here, 
down to here and wait. Oh, okay, yeah. One, two, three, yep, four. Now we need to shift each one of these points down two units. So that's going to go up to there. There, there, down to negative three. So now my graph, and a lot of times to make to be helpful with this, if I kind of know like my um, axis, if I have a vertical translation, a lot of times what I like to do is just create, kind of take that x-axis and shift it down to units. So therefore you can kind of see, okay, yes. I am keeping my curve exactly the same because I got to follow this pattern one more time. I got to go up again, intercept, minimum, intercept. Okay, so re again, remember which, which points were our intercepts. You could see that this point would have been an intercept, I moved down. This point was an intercept, moved down. This point was an intercept, I moved down. Here would have been an intercept, and here would have been an intercept. And that's very important when graphing, when you're doing the reciprocal functions, because anytime you have a, um, an intercept for sine and cosine, that is going to be your asymptote for your reciprocal function. So I need to make sure I note where all those were, and then I'm simply just going to draw in my asymptotes. Because your asymptotes are going to be where your graph is going to be approaching for cosecant. OK, so now, um, now all I'm simply going to do is draw in my graph, which, and where it's going to be pretty much like kind of shapes of parabolas from the maximum and the minimum approaching each of my asymptotes. And if you want to get a table of values, you can do that as well um, to kind of create in between each one of those scales. But I prefer just a computer software or a calculator to go and do that. The main important thing is you understand the transformations and at least the asymptotes and what the shape of the graph would look like. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph cosecant. Thanks.